My name is Wes Floyd. I'm a product manager on the Baca Yao team, and I'm presenting new project Water Lily on behalf of a much broader team. Ali Hare is one of our project leads. Uh, Simon uh, from our team has been doing a lot of development. Kai, Luke, uh, Irina, is, our team is helping. It's it's really, I guess, a lot of the Baca Yao team was also participating, but I just want to call out there's a, a lot more folks that are doing the work. I happen to be on the, the best time zone for this session. So <laughs> I've got to take you through the content. So I'm going to take you through three components here. First, we're going to talk a little bit about how Baca Yao fits in with FEM, a, a brief refresher. Then we're going to talk about LilyPad, which is an important new component we've built between FEM and Baca Yao, sort of a bridge. And then I'll spend most of the time talking about ethical art, AI-generated art, and a really interesting novel approach. that I think this is one of the first projects to ever do, which is compensating artists not for their work on chain through an NFT, but through derivative styles of their work on chain. Uh, so it's a fun use case and we'll jump right in. So for a little bit of uh, of promo here, background, uh, Baco Yao is sort of almost like an L2 on top of the Filecoin chain. You know, Filecoin chain, FEVM is where a lot of our coordination work happens. Bakuyao is an off-chain compute ecosystem. You can find out information about, about it at bakuyao.org uh, to see more about the architecture. And effectively, it can run any sort of compute that can be containerized in a Docker container or WASM binary uh, in a batch mode across the network of Bakuyao machines. So really trying to get the best of both worlds, the trust and verifiability of on-chain uh, with the verifiability of these new off-chain compute systems, but more robust, complicated workloads like, in this case, uh, ML model inference for generating art. Project LilyPad is the bridge between layer one and layer two. Uh, so LilyPad is effectively, uh, it's two components. One, it's a smart contract on Falcon Virtual Machine. It's listening for events. People might want to invoke a back of job, so it's listening for them to invoke those jobs. And then secondly, it's an off-chain daemon that is um, uh, listening for events that are triggered through the LilyPad events caller smart contract, and then actually triggering those back of jobs. So it's a bit of a, of a bridge at this point. I'm not going to use the word duct tape. Uh, I'm going to use the word bridge. Uh, so anyways, please find out more about LilyPad here at the website, GitHub. Here you can see the source code. This is a component that we will potentially open up to more broad use cases. We'll talk in a minute at the end about other applications of this technology. So if you're thinking about scenarios where you have on-chain workloads, smart contracts that are you know very smart contract intensive, but it could benefit and have more robust capability if it could do off-chain compute, or if you're already using that off-chain compute today in AWS or GCP, but if, if that compute were now more uh, trustless, verifiable, and open, those are exactly the types of use cases that we want to help you with. This is a demo from Ali's machine of actually invoking the LilyPad uh, caller solidity contracts. Uh, and in our GitHub repo, you'll see lots of examples of how to build your own here. But eventually, it enables a user to pay for a job using fill or tfill if you're on testnet, specify as a string input the spec of the off-chain job they want to run, what's a Docker container name, what, what specific uh, code do you want to run. And then uh, it invokes it, it sends it on chain. And then this is an example here. The uh, the, the previous, oops, hold on a second. The previous uh, examples that we use this for was just generating stable diffusion images. And let me do this here. This is an example of saying, we're gonna run a standard stable diffusion image. Stable diffusion, by the way, it, for folks that are not into machine learning, is a, is a framework for generating art. So we give it a text prompt and we say, generate, uh, unicorns and rainbows, and the AI can magically create that art. No human had to draw this, um, so it's very powerful stuff. Uh, but what's interesting, and people have talked about in the past, is to say, well, what if I wanted to generate that, but generate it in the style of Van Gogh, or generate in the style of Pablo Picasso? This style transfer thing is another layer on top of Stable Diffusion that's a really fun application of the two technologies combined. So this is what we were working on in the past. And you can see some examples of how the AI will automatically generate different combinations. It's all random each time. It's all unique of, uh, of this AI-generated art. So the next thing that we did on top of this was to build Water Lily. And the goal here is to say there's a lot of underrepresented artists, a lot of opportunity for them to better monetize their work. So 
instead of actually taking their work and selling that work on chain, what if we could train their style? So if there was a new artist in the space, let's say her name was Misty and Misty's got a tremendous amount of work. She's got 40 or 50 different art uh, pieces in her collection. And we're not going to, to do any work with her copyrighted work. We're just going to generate a style. It's a, it's an ML model effectively that represents her style. And so when I generate rainbow unicorns, I want to generate it in Misty's style specifically. And I also want a portion or all of the payments to go to Misty. This is the impetus behind uh, Water Lily, and it's a great way to bring together all these different concepts uh, into one place with a, with a nice sort of humanitarian uh, uh, output. So we are going to be launching this uh, project soon, the next few days. You'll see some more information about it if you visit waterlily.ai. We're still working a few bugs out. We're still growing the number of artists that we have on the page here, but I want to give you guys just a little bit of grounding of what it's going to look like. This is a couple of fun examples from our internal testing of, of what it looks like when you apply this style transfer to generated art. So we found in the public domain, this was an artist from the 1800s who had performed lots of drawing of Native Americans and English settlers and things like that. And so we gave it the text prompt, generate uh, a picture of Barack Obama. So this is Barack Obama as if that artist from the 1800s had drawn Barack Obama, which he did not. Uh, generated image of Captain America. This is all, again, generated images. Uh, and in this case, after the, the work comes back from Bakker Yao, we will be sending the funds to the artists themselves. Um, for public domain, we'll probably donate to a, to a charity that, that aligns with Falcoin Foundation's mission. Um, and then a couple other fun examples. We can even take things that are very messy, like these are stills from an artist who did a lot of noise-generated uh, art with music. We took the stills, we trained their style, and now we say generate rainbow unicorns. And this is actually rainbow-generated unicorns with that, that style applied. Um, some other examples here from a 1920s artist with some interesting illustrations. And now what, is, what does it look like as if that artist had generated Barack Obama? So lots of fun, fun things we can do there. We're really just scratching the surface. So in terms of what's next for this space, um, we're, we're going to be building on a couple of things. One, we're going to build on our partnerships in the decentralized science space. We've got some partners that were very interested in doing some uh, bioinformatics pipelines that generate NFTs. Um, and those NFTs, the backend work would go through Bakuyao. The NFTs would align well with their mission. So more, more to come on that. Um, and then we have some other partners that we're interested in doing, um, improving the ability to generate yield in decentralized finance. So rather than just having a smart contract that executes trade on your behalf, if you could have Bakuyao, which consumes large amounts of important information, clean information from IPFS and Filecoin, you could run more sophisticated models of how you want to buy and sell, exchange, create loan contracts within, within DeFi. So there's just lots of interesting areas when you're starting to combine the power of FEM, the power of off-chain compute. We're very excited about it. And then if anyone would like to get in touch with us, please reach out. We've got our GitHub information here for these various projects, Twitter accounts. Uh, I'm available in, in Filecoin Slack at West Floyd. Um, Ali, you can see here, um, developer Ali is uh, is the Twitter contact for Ali, who's running a lot of our project day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for the opportunity to, to present. That's all I have, uh, and uh, we appreciate it.